Welcome back to part two of I Catch Killers with former French spy Jack Beaumont. In part one we discussed Jack's career as a fighter pilot, special operations pilot and how he became a spy with uh, DGSE. Before I do I've got a confession to make. I met uh, Jack last week. I just uh, finished reading his book, The Frenchman. Uh, that goes into a lot of uh, stories about covert operations, made me slightly paranoid, but also uh, brought back my fi- uh, the memories I had of uh, policing and the excitement of being involved in an operation. So I was due to meet Jack. Jack texted me a location he wanted to meet me at at a certain time. It was a cafe. I thought I'd out spy Jack and get there early, get there, case the joint, make sure it was safe, find a nice corner in the cafe, and wait till Jack arrived. The plan was going well. I got to the cafe on time. Started to rain. That was a bit of a problem, but I had an umbrella. I rolled up at the cafe 10 minutes before we were due to meet, and I thought, I've done it. I shook myself off. I was a little bit wet from the rain, and looked around and started waiting to see where I was going to place myself to surprise Jack when he walked in the cafe. And I'd look over in the corner of the cafe, and this cool-looking dude sitting over there and just nodded to me. That was Jack. Jack <laughs> beat me as a spy, 1-0 so far. But I'll get to the bottom of it uh, during this podcast. Anyway, Jack. Now first, I, um, I gave you the meeting point on the day so that if you wanted to set up something with people observing <laughs> me or taking picture, you didn't have the time to set it up. See, I can't <laughs> beat that type of stuff. That's great. Yeah, you only text me just yeah. before the meeting. Yeah. We'll meet at this location. And... Um, and it's very easy to follow uh, someone with an umbrella. You see the umbrella from far. You, that, where did I hear? You told me that, didn't you? You told me that too. I had an umbrella. But it was raining. Then we came out of the cafe and it stopped raining. That must be because you're a spy. I don't know how you, how you work that. But it's those little, those little things that uh, interest me reading the book. And like all jokes aside, it made me realise how much I missed certain aspects of policing when you were at the sharp end where you were making decisions out in the field and uh, you had to plan for all types of uh, contingencies on covert operations that I was in, involved in and the adrenaline rush and the excitement of whether it's going to come off, the, intre- uh, the, 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 the fear, the concerns if you have, have a mistake. In the world that you operated on or in and uh, taking on board what you've said about um, some of the uh, the missions or the cases that we were described in your book, the consequences were extremely high if you made mistakes. Yeah. So how did you, in, in terms of preparation for it, was everyone of the same, like the spies? Is that what they're looking for, people that just don't make mistakes? Well, I think you can never, you can never guarantee uh, that people won't make mistakes. Everyone is doing mistakes and every day. The question is... Um, how do you organize yourself uh, to avoid a maximum of those mistakes first? And uh, going back to the fighter pilot training, um, it's about the, the, the capability you have to do self-criticism. So if you do a mistake, so you're permanently judging yourself. Uh, mm. And so if you, uh, if you do a mistake, which does happen, uh, you have to see it by yourself immediately and then to recover from this mistake immediately. Mm. The danger is when you uh, do mistakes uh, and you don't realize that it was a mistake. Right, okay, Uh, that does make sense. And it is something about the character of a person if they can self-regulate. Yeah. It does give you you more confidence. Operating in the world of a spy, uh, paranoia, did that kick in? Like you're watching people that don't know you're watching them. Did you think people were watching you all the time? Of course, of course. So you reach a a very high level of paranoia. I mean, you have to... um, So what I was doing, basically, you have roughly five different identities on which you you turn all the time for your different missions. But I I, I want to talk to you about that. Sorry, continue on, but we will come back to that. And so all those uh, false uh, lives... Um, if if someone, for example, if you approach someone of another country um, to try to uh, recruit him, uh, maybe I should explain this actually. So, as I was telling you, you have this those analysts in the intelligence division. Yep. And in the intelligence division, you have the people who are managing the sources when the analyst doesn't know who are the sources. But those sources, first you have to recruit them. Mm. 
And uh, that's where the uh, operational division uh, kicks in. So first you have to do, which is described in the book, first you have to do uh, what we call the environment um, of the person. So you have the technical environment of the person with his phone, email, etc., etc., etc. And then you have the operational environment, too, which is basically observing, following uh, by lots of different ways. So you have to uh, sometimes, you know, enter the house, all this kind of stuff so that you can put some mics or you, you really have to know everything of their lives, mm. but still being a ghost. For the moment, you are not entering their lives. You are invincible. Yep. And then with this operational environment and the technical environment, you will um, define what we call the MICE. So mm. M-I-C-E. So it's the four leverage to manipulate someone. M is for money. I is for ideology, C is for coercion, and E is for ego. So depending on what you're going to detect, you're going to decide to approach this person on the mice you've selected. So it can be someone having some playing debt, yep. or, and it's, it's all about money. You, in identifying <clears throat> money, ideology, corruption, and ego, it's almost identifying people's weaknesses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's the purpose. Yeah. And from the moment you will identify their, their weakness, uh, so the, the leverage of manipulation, then you will go to the next phase, which is uh, the environment at the contact. So one of us will enter this person's life, but knowing already a lot about this person. Mm. So let's say that uh, at your boxing club, yep. uh, there is a guy you never seen before in your boxing club, and uh, suddenly he became your best mate after one week. Yeah, there is something wrong. Okay. Okay. I'll get rid so, of him. <laughs> so I never liked that bloke anyway. Yeah, if you have <laughs> yeah. all the same tastes and all yeah. like all the same things, there might be something wrong there. Yeah, okay. and it, it's it's funny <clears throat> that you're saying that, and it's just making me process it that you've got to make that connection, and that is it, it, there's a real. Um, connection with the spy game isn't it yeah. you've got to make that personal connection with people and people are vulnerable like it might be the lonely guy at the boxing gym that wants a friend and you become his friend and yeah yeah okay so you you uh you will do the environment at the contact yep and this environment at the contact will uh is meant to confirm the mice that you've been detecting before Right. because you get to know him really and yep. he talks to you etc cetera, et cetera. and from the moment this is really decided the mice, we decide or not to go on the approach phase right. where we're going to start to... So, uh, sorry, just uh, so I stay with yeah. you on that. With the mice, so you've made the connection and then you use mice as the acronym, but it's um, money, ideolo ideology, corruption and ego. Uh, coercion. Coercion, yeah, sorry. Coercion. coercion. Yeah. Looking for um, <coughs> that weakness and how you're going to strategize uh, making uh, the next step with the person. Yeah, because what you are looking for is the way at the end of the day uh, where you're going to force him, where it will be too late for him to go backwards mm. and you're going to force him to give you this information. Right. Uh, so um, it can be uh, yeah, the money. Uh, for example, you, uh, you will uh, start to uh, offer him some side business from his business where he can make a bit of money because you know he's got a mistress. So he wants to pay uh, certain things for his mistress without his wife knowing. Yep. So you're gonna make him used to receive this out of the under the radar money, becoming okay. dependent on it. Yeah, but dependent on yep. it. And then one day suddenly you will say, "Look, actually, what I need is this." And the guy will say, oh, "I can't give you this." Well, so well, if you don't give me this, first you have will have no more money, and then the people you're working for will receive a picture of you receiving some money and giving mm. me some documentation and you will go to jail or worse. Yeah. And the guy is hooked. He can't escape it anymore. So it is, uh, it's a uh, blackmailing in yeah, effect. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it can be, it can be, uh, I mean, you are fighting the bad guys. So, yeah. so you have to, uh, you have to apply the same methodologies as the bad guys. You have yeah. to become bad yourself. Yeah. Uh, that's what is really hard because you've been hired for your mental stability, yeah. uh, being married uh, with kids, and because you are uh, a good guy who wants to fight <laughs> the bad guys. And your integrity. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then you have to develop your dark side yeah. at the maximum because you have to, to be able to understand uh, those bad guys 
and 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 uh, basically win on their own game, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and uh, so you have this contact environment, and then we move to the approach phase where we're gonna really uh, try the leverage mm -hmm. of the mice, and then you go to the recruitment phase where the guy will understand he is hooked. Yep. And then you have the manipulation starting. From the moment this manipulation starts, then the operational division disappears. Yeah. And this guy is given to a guy of the intelligence division who will uh, right. deal with the, okay. the assets so I, and I the source. So I understand what you're saying there. So <coughs> the intel might identify, operation will go up, make the contact and then- Recruit him. Recruit him. Yeah. And then the manipulation starts, yeah. but then the operational side of it, you don't need to be part of it now no. because you've- because the, the thing is, um, the dangerous part of, of all this, of course, the unstable part of all this mm. is approaching, yep. recruiting. That's where everything can go wrong. Yeah. And so that's why you have false IDs uh, to uh, be able to disappear in 24 hours. Is it now uh, in the book, and you've said it here and uh, said it to me in previous conversations, that the five IDs, is that basically you've got an ID, you can be Jack Beaumont here, you could be John Smith, another ID, yeah. and the backstory, the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So um, every cover uh, we have, uh, because I was in a very specific uh, unit of the operational division, uh, some other units, for example, the TV series, the Bureau, mm. uh, it's a different unit I was in, and uh, they are doing more long-term stuff. Right. Um, so they have to have one very heavy cover. Uh, for us, uh, as it's very um, offensive, let's yeah. say, and operational, um, we have to have, of course, uh, a cover uh, which is deep enough so that so that it can hold for a week or two weeks or three weeks. Three weeks. So if you put yourself up as a diamond trader or whatever, you're going to have to have a certain amount of knowledge about exactly. that. You're exactly. going to have to have a business card, exactly. a contact number. Exactly. So yeah. you have to have, you spend a lot of time um, uh, and I would say maintaining your your legends, yeah. And and for example, if you are someone else, you have to have a, nowadays a social social media. So you have to have a LinkedIn profile. The company, your bullshit company, has to have a LinkedIn profile. Have to have an address. You have to have an address. The address where you are meant to live. You have to be known by the guy owning the cafe sh coffee shop around the corner, yeah. the pharmacy, everything. So you have to spend some time in your false address. Yeah. That, it's interesting too because of the um, uh, the increase in social media and that it does make it more difficult because before it's it's very easy to rock uh, up. Yes, and say, I know. I mean, it's very useful. On the other oh, hand, the, yeah, yeah. If, if you prepare it properly, yeah, it's very yeah. useful. But uh, if you are uh, if you have your 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 false ID and uh, and someone's going to check your LinkedIn profile and yeah. you have zero connections, one connection, <laughs> something is wrong. Uh, yeah. If uh, the company is meant to have this address and someone comes and check the address mm. and you can't find the company and no one knows about the company. So it's got to stand up to a scrutiny and stalking through the social media yeah. basically. And, and you have to be able to know. So for example, let's say you're working on a, in another country, a bad guy in another country. Mm. Uh, let's say that during the approach phase, uh, he will feel that something is wrong. He goes and see his own internal security services of yep. his country, and he says, ah, oh, I've been uh, approached by this guy called uh, Gary Jubilin, mm. and uh, he says he's working for uh, this company, and uh, apparently this company is located in this in this uh, town. Those internal services are gonna check. They're gonna check your, your all social uh, network, uh, media. They're gonna come physically and check the company. So they're awake up to the fact this isn't really a podcast <laughs> studio. You've <laughs> caught me. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so so they're gonna come and check the real address, yeah. your real address, and the real address of the company. Yep. <coughs> so you have to be able uh, to know if someone come came and check. Yeah. So every false address for the company or for your own personal false ID address, you have to be able to know if someone came and check. You can't it, you can't let your guard down, can you? No. And with those different identities, then you've got the real identity, who you actually are. Um, did you ever get to a situation where you'd wake up and couldn't even remember what role you were playing or 
Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have, uh, I mean, in some of the safe houses we have, and you have all those phones, uh, which are all of them linked to a different operation. Yeah. So you can have, let's say, between 10 and 15 uh, approach in the same mm. time. Uh, and so uh, you have to put some uh, stickers behind the phones uh, to remember which yeah. name corresponds to this phone, if, you know, if someone calls you. Um, but you have to be known in every area of your false address, et cetera, et cetera. So and as you said, you got to go to the local cafe and have yeah, yeah, yeah. coffee in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, and on yeah. purpose, uh, discuss with the boss of the cafe yeah. and tell him about your life, which is not your real life. Yeah. So that if someone one day comes with uh, the picture of you yeah. and says to the owner of the cafe, do you know this guy? Yeah. And he says, yeah, 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 yeah. He comes here, you know, in the morning. He's doing this and that for a living. He lives around the corner, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I would imagine with the stories, you try to keep a, an element of truth in the stories. I know with covert operations that uh, I've been involved in with the police, we try to keep it close enough that yeah. uh, it's it's believable to start with yeah so. it's it's uh the best lie uh, has a uh, 80 percent of truth in it yeah, yeah. it's it's uh because otherwise you you lose your your lie for sure yeah uh you know you see in movies uh spies uh they are you usually they don't have any more parents and they don't have this and they, it, it's not uh, mm. uh usually people have still their parents or yeah. you know so you have to you have to create this as well and be able to um, to talk about it. Yeah, but yeah. you get to the the total paranoia. Uh, why? Because what you are doing to the others, approaching the others mm. to manipulate them, or you approach them directly, or sometimes you approach their wives. Yeah, or uh, you can uh, approach uh, sometimes the, the at school through the kid, etc., uh, mm. etc. Et uh, and so, if you're doing it to some others, why? Uh, someone else wouldn't do it to you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, very much. That's why you have in the in 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 the book. Uh, I think it's yeah halfway through the the, the Frenchman where uh, I I came back uh, from a mission and and my wife said to me, ah, uh, uh, oh, uh, while you were away, I met this uh, very nice um, you know um, woman at school. Uh, her kids her kid is in the same uh, class as our kid. She's very nice. Uh, we had a few uh, coffees together while you were away. And uh, she told me that when you would be back, uh, because I told her that you were working for the Ministry for Defense, it was my official mm. thing. Uh, and so sometimes you were away because you were doing some mission planification or this kind of stuff. Um, they would be very happy to uh, have us for dinner in their place. And so um, immediately I said to my wife, how did she approach you? Have you seen her before at school? Have you seen the kid before at school? Did she ask any question about me? Have you seen her car? Have you seen the ID plate of her car? Have you seen the husband? Have you been to her place already? <laughs> I, I I thought that was very interesting with your character, Alex yeah. Depine, in the, in the book, how they re really became paranoid about uh, something as simple as that. And the wife uh, in the book was trying to explain, no, I, I met the kids at the playground or yeah. the, the kids are friends. Yeah. Perfectly harmless, but... The, that is a, an example of the paranoia kicking in. Yeah, and even uh, if that's through the wife, but even sometimes you just, uh, uh, I don't know, take the, the bus or you somewhere to have lunch. Yeah. And you have uh, the guy at the table next to yours, you know. Anyone that's talking to you, basically. Talking to you, yeah. Yeah. And then you are you're really, uh, really cautious, yeah. of course, all the time, even if it's uh, during the holidays or, or so. Basically, uh, anyone, anyone, is a threat. Yeah. Potentially did a threat. Did they look after the, your psychology? On <sighs> Did you get the, like a, a debrief after uh, after missions or? No. So there are some psychologists in yeah. the company. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we are told that if we want to, we can go and talk to them. Mm. But you uh, know that actually if you do so, uh, then they will report that you are becoming unstable. <laughs> and then you will, you will be taken out of the field. Yeah. So the only way you can really release the pressure, it's not with your wife because yeah. uh, she all doesn't need to know or doesn't want to know, which was my case. Yeah. And you don't want to worry her and you don't want, actually, you end up um, thinking that you don't want her to see uh, how dark you are becoming yeah. and uh, you don't want her to understand uh, 
uh, what you are doing because she would ask you to stop immediately. Uh, so the only way you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, take all this out is by um, going for some drinks with the, the maids going the same as you do, yeah. who you trust. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's that's why I was telling you uh, on the side of the podcast that I have some those very uh, it's more than friends it's uh, brothers yeah. um, uh, from the company mainly and and um, and because we all have this issue uh, one day we decided to um, to create uh, our own family yeah uh, let's say uh, and uh, we uh, we created a Scottish clan yeah. so uh, we uh, so that the, the, the our friendship is uh, engraved in the marble you know yeah. so we designed our own tartan for one year and a half and then we registered our clan in Scotland that's pretty cool and then we printed our own kilt on on the on the on the main roll of the the tartan yeah and so we do uh, we try to do one one weekend per year yeah uh, just the clan it's and a special the, bond. yeah and the, the the rule number one is no judgment yeah so basically you go there it's like a group therapy yeah you know the uh, unknown uh, alcoholics <laughs> those th- those type of friendships are important aren't they yeah. when when you've got friends that you can say that i've done this that's yeah. something that you're ashamed of or exactly. whatever but you can talk and about there is no it. judgment yeah, yeah that's there important. is n- no judgment and no uh, moral uh, lessons you yeah know? because we all uh, we all uh, need this when you do this kind of this kind of, uh, of yeah. job. It's interesting that you say this, and I, I see a lot of uh, similarities between another guest that uh, we've had on here, Keith Banks, and he was an undercover uh, police officer, and he said that uh, he would have to spend time with the people that he used to work undercover with because it was his salvation, because it's the only people who understood what he yeah. had been through. So I get where you're coming from from there, and uh, <clears throat> sometimes that type of network of uh, friendships, uh, yeah, is a lot more beneficial than um, the the professional help that you could get. Yeah, but. Um, Living that lifestyle, and there was um, one of the, uh, and I don't want to give away the full story in the book. I won't give away the ending, but it was good. And uh, I, I think you said there might be a second book, which I'll uh, I'll definitely uh, be buying. Um, your wife identified, uh, she didn't want to know, This is, we're talking in the book, she didn't want to know what you were doing outside. And then when the, it, you flagged that you were concerned about the family, it could be someone manipulating, they mightn't be real friends, they might be after targeting my family and I think she made the comment is that what you do at work and yeah. like as in are you that evil that you're going to the very thing that you fear most yeah. is that what you're actually doing at work yeah. how does that make you feel if someone close to you and we're talking fictional but it's uh, let's call it hypothetical someone no, that, judging that's, you on that's something doing. that's something she um, she uh, she really said to me hmm. Um, you know, the intelligence world is like, um, you know, when you, I don't know if you do some scuba diving, <clears throat> but basically, uh, when you, um, when you never did any scuba diving, uh, and you look at the ocean, mm. you see the horizon and you see the boats on the surface. Yeah. And from the moment, uh, you've be, been doing some scuba diving or snorkeling yep. and you saw what is under the surface. Yeah. You can stop your, you can't stop yourself when you look at the ocean thinking what might be under yeah uh, it's the same with the intelligence and and um, and uh, so me I always see what is under but my wife because she didn't want to know yeah uh, she still sees the horizon the sun and the boats on the surface yeah and so she can't um, uh, she, she does understand but she uh, she always want to be positive and give a chance to the people. Uh, my wife is someone very, uh, very positive. Yeah. And clearly, if she would uh, not have been there, uh, giving me this stability, mm. uh, I think I would have lost myself doing this job. Yeah. Uh, it, it was really my uh, my anchor. And also, she could be my anchor because she didn't want to know. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe I would have dragged her down, down with me. Yeah. Uh, but clearly she deserves uh, more medals than I do. Um, and uh, she's someone very, very strong because she's been losing a lot of friends as well. Because of your... Because of my job. Yeah. And and for a period of time, she was not even allowed to tell her parents. So uh, yeah. she, she had to lie uh, yeah. to, to her family and to her parents and losing all her friends. 
so it was uh, very uh, very so tough. So she, she's definitely pay pay the price uh, ah, as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, clearly, and and uh, and so in addition to that, to all this social life which disappears, uh, when it you come to the point when she realizes that that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, uh, threatening another family or a guy through his family or whatever then it's an additional uh, you know uh, yeah uh, uh, look uh, at you uh, yeah yeah and exactly. like, yeah, when you walk out the yeah, door so that's it, what you're doing yeah so is it worthwhile yeah uh, we have no friends we have no social life we have yeah. no nothing I have to lie to everyone mm. for you to do this kind of stuff you know? yeah uh, what's what's the point uh, and, and actually for a very small salary because you are really uh, not well paid at all. That's a, that's another thing that uh, uh, dispel a myth that uh, I had that with international spies that uh, in the book that uh, you're talking about when you're out operational and you're in trouble when you come back to the office and you haven't got the receipts yeah. for, for money that you spent for a meal or, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I know that was a bane of my frustration that uh, in the policing that I could be on a murder investigation and there I was sitting for half a day adding up a car diary to make sure that uh, the kilometres um, carried with the uh, speedometer. And uh, it's just... It's part and parcel of it, isn't it? But, uh... Yeah, but why? I mean, I understand why. It's because there was so many, uh, uh, by the past, some, uh, so many excess. Yeah. Uh, some guys who really uh, took some money away from the company for, for their own bank account or this kind of stuff. So I can understand that you have to put some pro- pro- procedures in place. But it, it really makes uh, the work on the field really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. And... and uh, and in terms of uh, personal salary, I mean, uh, as you're a military guy in the services, yeah. you're, you're paid as a military guy with your rank. Does and because exactly, so you're not uh, you, you might be living a, a lifestyle of traveling around, but you're not getting paid a, uh, a big salary. The type of work that you do does it corrupt people? And I, I, I sit here and again, this is well, this is not in judgment because I've seen police get corrupted. The temptation becomes too much, and uh, police have been corrupted, and that's you know public public knowledge. Uh, did that type of thing happen in the spy world? Yes, I think so. I mean, the, 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 being a spy is uh, it's not uh, like in movies. It's not a license to kill. Uh, it's it's a um, it's a license to uh, to do everything which is normally forbidden. Mm. But uh, so manipulate people, lie to people, threatening people, etc., et and and uh, all this for the global good yeah. of your country, yeah. or not only your country. Uh, when you are fighting against terrorists, mm. it's not just for your country, but it's for the people to uh, to live their life in peace uh, without even knowing that some guys like us. Are doing this in the in the in the shadows to keep the peace. Uh, to keep the peace, uh, but um, uh, some some guys because of those false identities. Uh, sometimes you have a false bank account, mm. uh, of course a false passport, whatever that, that lends itself. You can you can open a bank account uh, yeah. everywhere everywhere you want under this uh, under this this name false name. And sometimes you have to uh, pay some. Uh, uh, human sources because the leverage in the mice is money. Mm. So you have to give a, a suitcase uh, full of dollars. Mm. Uh, of course, if the suitcase never arrives in the hands of the the, the source, uh, what is he going to do? Uh, yeah. He's not going to knock on the door of the company and complain. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I, I never witnessed it, but uh, I guess so. Uh, I guess that, that some guys, for sure, um, have been uh, not corrupted, but taking some things away for themselves using their false mm. identities. What I could witness is some guys uh, setting up um, a second life, having an affair yeah. with their ID, their false ID, yeah. uh, in the country they, they, were, they used to go. And they had to go there like maybe a week every month or something like that. And uh, being someone else, and uh, and uh, and living this double life, mm. uh, having a, another woman mm. in the other country, um, and being able to pay with another credit card and with another ID, and and uh, having booked their hotel room with another name. 
Yeah, so the, the, a lot of temptation. So I would imagine you've, you've got to have a strong moral compass yes. individually, yes. like when you're out in the field, because even though that you, you have your uh, your people there uh, assisting you in the field, a lot of stuff that you're doing is on your own. Yeah. And uh, so individually you'd have to have a strong moral compass. Yeah, that's why that's why it's, it's, uh, it's easy for the people who don't know this world to judge Mm. Uh, people like us uh, because of the image global image you have James Bond Jason Bourne uh, whatever um, but the truth is uh, that uh, I mean I I, I, I uh, salute the, the, the my mates who are still in the in the company yeah uh, because you need to have this very 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 strong uh, moral compass for sure uh, you um, also uh, spoke about uh, Sometimes with the introduction stage where you, you're meeting the person and uh, I think you made the comment along the lines of you knew that when Jack Beaumont came into this person's life, that person's life was now going to change and it's likely to change for, for the worst. Yeah. And you also said that some of the people that you had to manipulate or some of the people that um, yeah, uh, you had to use to fulfill or to complete the mission, <clears throat> you quite liked and yeah. uh, you struggled there. Do you want to talk uh, uh, about that? The yeah, sometimes, I mean, the, the, so the, the purpose, of course, is to grab uh, intelligence. Um, and the intelligence is in, or in a suitcase or in a safe or in a computer or in a hard drive or in, a, the, in someone's mind. And um, it's not because this someone has this information in his mind that he's a bad person. It can be a, a really nice person working mm. in a very important uh, infrastructure in a government or somewhere, but he's the one who's got the information uh, but because that's his job. Mm. doesn't mean he's a, a bad guy. Yeah. So um, when you have to uh, manipulate, uh, knowing that clearly it's not going to end up well uh, for the person you manipulate, um and it's a bad person uh you do it with less uh, remorse yeah but when it's a nice person and a good person and mani the manipulation takes uh, a lot of time i mean you can you can manipulate someone or approach someone uh, for more than one year yeah, it, it, yeah. You're, you're basically forming a relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. You? before you gain the trust and before this person starts to uh, talk to you yeah um, and and so you get to know this person and someone you really realize that in another life this this person could really have become a, a friend yeah uh, that you uh, you admire his intellect uh, his sense of humor uh, the way he cares about his family as well etc et and, and yeah, I, I'm sitting here just thinking it would be hard like you'd be you would be spending time with a person to spend time socialize and build that trust you got to give a bit of yourself they're going to yeah. give a lot of themselves yeah. to you and yeah. uh, knowing that uh, you're going to bring the axe down at some stage yeah, yeah. And, and uh and sometimes you feel that you basically have in your hands uh of course the decision because you are the one on the field yeah so if you come back to the company and say well you know, I've been reaching this point with this guy and uh, actually what he's telling me is something we already know. We can't have more than that. There is no purpose continuing yeah. the manipulation. We can grab the same intelligence different ways quicker. So let's stop there. You basically save his life. Yeah, that's interesting. So you do, you, there is that uh, uh, where you, yeah. you've got uh, choices. Yeah, but uh, what's what's terrible is when this person is a nice person. Yeah. But what he's working on or what he knows is really, really critical for for your country. So the greater good. Yeah. And so yeah. you have to you have to continue. And yeah. that's where you end up looking at yourself in the mirror, thinking I'm a monster. Yeah. Because you look at yourself and you think, I'm a monster. I'm just I'm just bringing this guy and his family to a bad end. Yeah. When he's a good person, mm. but I'm supposed to uh, do this job to help to help and save the good people yeah and actually that's not what i'm doing you know mm. so you have this dilemma and 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 you have to develop as i was saying before you have to develop this dark side uh as much as you can and one day you realize that actually this dark side is is taking more space uh than the the the, the light 
yeah. uh, uh, parts you have in, uh, in, inside you. The fact that you can identify that it becomes a, a dilemma is important. I, th- I think if you could do it without feeling, that's probably when the dark side's overtaken you. Yeah. If you, you've got no empathy for the people that you're, uh, you but yeah, but sometimes you have to force yourself not to have any uh, yeah. empathy because I, otherwise you won't be good at um, lying and manipulating this person. I know, um, I, I, I know what you're saying there because sometimes I, I'd go to work when I was a, a police officer at the sharp end of some investigations and I know I'm getting up in the morning and I know I'm going to upset people. I know I'm going to be hard. I know you know, people's lives are going to be destroyed yeah. because of what I'm going to do today. But again, the greater good that was was what I signed up for as a, as a job. But you come home and you're you're exhausted, and you come home and you're drained, and you come home and you, you say look in the mirror, or you could just be sitting on the lounge and thinking about yourself and going, "Am I a good person? What have I done yeah. today?" People are crying after, yeah, you know, I've just done my job. Yeah, um, is that the type of thing that you struggled with? Yeah, yeah, and and. and uh and uh, basically, when you are, uh, uh, let's say, a normal military guy, yeah. uh, whether it's a fighter pilot or and all those those guys doing special forces and everything, uh, which are really uh, amazing jobs, uh, being on the field and mm. all those guys who are at the moment we speak uh, in Afghanistan or somewhere else and see their family every six months and have to shoot people. Uh, but at least when they come back from this, they are recognized for what they do it's official that's another point so yeah. so they mm. they um they can talk to uh the other military guys they can talk to their wives they can talk to their parents uh they can talk to their mom their and dad generally they'd be shown uh, some respect uh, yeah the they public. can talk to yeah. their i don't know brothers sisters yeah. whatever they can go and have a dinner yeah with all their friends uh they haven't seen for six months or their family mm. and talk about what they've been going through and and you will have compassion from yeah. the others but in the intelligence, you can't share it with anyone. So there is no, uh, there is no, uh, you know, everyone, all of us in, in all our jobs, whatever your job is, you like to be uh, recognized and, and uh, re- kind of rewarded uh, mentally yeah. for what you do. You, you are happy to arrive in a dinner and say to the others, ah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know, because you're proud of what you're doing. Yeah. And everyone likes to talk about himself. Yeah. Uh, but in intelligence, you're doing through all this, you know that people who don't know intelligence sometimes have a bad judgment and a bad image of what a yeah. spy is. Yeah. And you and, and you come back home and you can't express it to anyone. Mm. You, you can't share it with anyone. That, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. But, uh, you know, and I'm saying similar, similarities between policing, but at least with policing that, yeah, you know, generally, yeah, you know, we're not everyone's favourite, but generally people respect what you do and you, you can talk about it. But You can say it. I yeah. mean, if you arrive to a dinner, yeah, with some people you don't know, uh, new friends or whatever. You, you can and talk about we've wh- locked someone up. Yeah, and what do you yeah. for a living? Yeah, you know, Gary. Oh, I'm a cop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, tell us about it. You know. So you're really left with your own thoughts, aren't you? Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so you you have to uh, lock, you know, your soul, yeah, uh, you, inside, you know, and like in jail. Yeah. You feel like your your soul is is in jail inside your body. Can you um, relay to us a story when um, you're going to drop it on the person that you, you the manipulation process starts? Like you've made the connection, you've made a friendship. Someone's oh hi Jack, hi Gary, how are you? Yeah, let's catch up for a drink, and then we're sitting there, and you go, actually Gary, there's something I want to speak to you about. Here's a photo of you doing such and such. Can you talk about a, an example without giving specifics? Uh. It's hard to. Uh, I don't want to uh, to uh, give any uh, any uh, secrets away because that's not the purpose of the of the the book. Not uh, not so much um, the what you used to manipulate, but when you actually dropped it on the person, and how did the person react? Were they shocked, disappointed, angry? Uh, it did happen to me, for example, to um, <clears throat> I approached for uh, one year uh, the son of a target mm-hmm. who was a student. Yep. A uh, student in another country, and uh, his dad was, of course, the main target yep. in another country. Um, and uh, we wanted to, of course, grab the dad at the end of the day, but it was very hard to uh, reach him in the country he was. And uh, for the good of his son, he did put his son in um, 
in a university in an, in a third country yeah. under another name so yeah. that his son didn't have any any trouble etc and, mm. and so i had to become friend with the son uh, for um, yeah almost one year yep friend enough so that uh, the day his dad came to this country where he was studying to visit him mm. which was once or twice a year yeah uh, he liked me so much that uh, he wanted me to meet his dad. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm cringing. This is this is hard. Yeah. And and uh and uh we were there in a hotel and I met the dad mm. and uh and the son was happy for once to uh introduce to his dad one of his one of his friends. Yeah. Um and so and the dad the dad uh, the son uh walked away from the table and to order uh, coffees and, and and things so I, I i stayed there sitting next to the the dad for a few minutes and uh, so he said ah oh, so you're a friend of my son that's great and so you've been meeting uh, at the university you're doing the same studies mm -hmm. blah 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 and i said well actually i'm not i'm not his friend i'm not studying i'm working for the french secret service right. and what i want to know is this this and this and that and the guy said, so he became all white, yeah, very pale. And he said, I, I don't understand. So, well, your son's going to come back at the table and you're going to say that uh, his friend is very nice. Uh, meanwhile, if you refuse to work with us, um, the name of your son, his false name under which he's doing his studies in this country will be dropped to the local services as a leak. And he will be arrested because they want to reach you as well. And he will be captured or interrogated and tortured uh, so that they can leverage you. So if you refuse to work with me nicely, then I will drop your son to the walls. Okay. Well, um, it, it's chilling. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the son came back yep. and sat there and his dad was all white. Yeah. And uh, the son said, ah, so dad, uh, how do you like my friend uh, Francois? You know? Yeah. And I said, ah, your friend is very nice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. and that must like that must take a little bit out of you, but something like that, you, you, yeah. If you've got an ounce of decency, it must take a little bit out of you. Yeah, but this one was complex because actually the dad was a very bad guy. Yeah, but the son was a good guy. Okay, so again, it's for the greater good, and people, yeah, uh, uh, there will be collateral uh, damage on on the way yeah. to uh, solve it. I uh, I understand that from policing. Um, I sometimes in investigations that uh, yeah we stir uh, there might be a murder in a country town and we'll stir that town up and there'll be people that get damaged from what we've uncovered and, and what we do but uh, you're doing something that's important something that needs to be done the magnitude of what you do with French yeah you know, um, foreign spy service it would be uh, well you're not going to be able to talk about it but no. the consequences are, are very high and uh, is that something you held strength on with what you're doing, the darkness that uh, it was for the greater good? Is that? Uh... Yeah, you, f you feel, um, I mean, the, the, typically the story I just, the example I just mentioned, which will uh, normally uh, uh, be in, in book number two, actually, um, because I want to explore in book number two a bit more this level of paranoia mm. and this internal conflict. Mm. Uh, where uh, you, you are, you want to be a good guy because that's why you've been joining, and 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 the purpose of this job is to, uh, you know, help the uh, the people of your country to sleep uh, nicely mm. without wor being worried. But actually, you realize that uh, you know you are you are yourself a, a bad guy. So what is maintaining you and what um, pushes you to continue to do it? is the final outcome mm. so um, when you manage to reach some very critical intelligence and uh, two weeks after uh, you see a france uh, president or whoever uh, the position of france on the international uh, scene uh, with the uh, united nations or yeah. uh, nato or whatever and and you can see that france says no we're not going to do this in this country mm. and you know that that comes from this intelligence yeah 
Okay, so that must give you some sense yeah. of satisfaction. And but then, yeah. but one more time, no one will never say thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can't talk about it in dinners. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or to your friends uh, who you don't have anymore <laughs> yeah. because you don't have friends anymore. Um, you don't. T- you can't talk about it to your wife or to your your parents or to whoever. And so you are the only one to know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you certainly be a topic of conversation around the dinner table. What do you do? I, I was a fighter pilot, then I did this, and now I'm well, doing actually, that. Actually, actually uh, the, the the fighter pilot thing has saved me a, a huge amount of time. Well, I, I reckon you could distract the dinner party exactly. for the whole night talking exactly. about being a fighter pilot. Yeah. And when from the moment you say, oh, I used to be a fighter pilot, uh, yeah. people are not um, asking anymore about your actual job. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, well, I, I could see how that would be uh, would be handy, but. Um, the stuff that you you do when you decided, and I think you spent eight years in yeah. uh, DGSE, yep. and eight years, and I read somewhere or you've made the comment to me that uh, normally that about five years in that operational phase. That's a general as a pure operational. So yeah. Some guys are doing uh, are doing more than I than I than I did. Yeah, uh, some guys are doing less. Um, but let's say that the average, yeah, um, it's is around five years. Yeah, yeah. And what at what point in time did you think okay enough's enough? Did they tap you on the shoulder or did you no. make the decision that uh, no, you're I made out? The, I made the decision. Yeah, yeah. Is there there is it because changes in yourself or is it that one particular case uh, that, or mission? I can't, I've got to get used to <laughs> saying mission. <laughs> I wish the cops had missions. That uh, sounds a lot cooler. Um, um, well, it was a, a mix, a bit a mix of everything. So it was. Um, some uh, specific uh, missions I was working on at that time, uh, plus um, the fact that I could s- feel myself um, becoming someone else. Yeah. And you know that you are reaching, a- a- and through the eyes of my wife as well, in terms of level of paranoia, mm-hmm. uh, permanent, permanent paranoia. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, even over the weekend. So all the holidays, you know, mm. and so you end up really alone, alone in your mind, alone in your own body, and and alone uh, in the in the society. Did that par- paranoia manifest itself in the way you were behaving at home or uh, in public yeah. or yeah, yeah, yeah. what what type of things? Ah, oh, walking with my wife and kids uh, during the weekend in the in the streets of Paris. Mm. Uh, and suddenly saying to my wife, uh, let's let's turn left. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because you see, there is one car there. There is one guy there waiting. He must be waiting for something there. We mustn't go through uh, through this uh, this area, etc. And she was like, well, it's why it doesn't matter. You're on basically you're on a weekend. <laughs> yeah. I say, yeah, but can be can be for us. It can be for me. Or uh, I mustn't be seen there if someone takes pictures on another mission. Yeah. Uh, I mustn't be on the picture. Uh, if you are visiting a, a touristy place in Paris and you have all those people taking pictures, uh, I was feeling very uh, uncomfortable. Why? why? <laughs> yeah, they, they identified you and yeah. this is your family. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's it's really uh, it's really taking you and and uh, and you sleep, of course, uh, really badly. Yeah. Uh, because you uh, you're thinking of the, the the mission you had the the day before and the mission you're gonna have the day after, mm. and how you're gonna juggle with all, all, all this. So uh, yeah, you reach a point where you think, okay, uh, the missions I'm doing at the moment, uh, I'm I'm not feeling, uh, you know, uh, convinced myself uh, about the purpose of oh, it. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, I I don't recognize myself. Yeah, uh, when I look at myself in the mirror, mm. uh, my wife I can see in her eyes that uh, she doesn't recognize myself as well. And you start to behave uh, like even for your kids instead of being a joyful dad uh, playing with them, mm. uh, you're always uh, stressed and, and and looking behind your shoulder. Yeah, and and so. Uh, Instead of having fun with them and enjoying life with them, um, you uh, they can feel that you are permanently uh, stressed and uh, not aggressive, but uh, not joyful. 
and, and uh, disconnected from the family environment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you think, look, that's uh, that's the good uh, good tipping point to uh, to stop. Yeah. 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 So that's that's really why I mean the, the in in this book and the Frenchman the reason why I wanted to um, how everything started is I was having a, a beer here in Sydney with a, a good friend of mine uh, called Oliver and, uh, and thank you Oliver <laughs> because he <laughs> cheers, had, cheers, he, to Oliver. cheers to Oliver he had the, he had the, the ID and I was basically telling him I said look. I'm I'm still thinking of everything I did, mm. and I have those flashbacks of some missions I did. Uh, it's like it's like PTSD, you know, yeah. syndrome. So I was, as I said in previous interviews uh, on on ABC, uh, I was basically walking around my house at 2 a.m. Uh, in the dark, naked, with a knife in my hand, yeah. and and sitting there on the couch in the middle of the night and waiting in front of the door that someone would come in. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and. Um, and so I was telling him all those, you know, stories and feelings and stuff. And he said, "Look, look at your background: fighter pilot, uh, flying for special forces or intelligence, and then a spy. You should write a book." Yeah. And uh, I said, "Yeah, but you know, it's very." Uh, it's I very don't think tricky. Oliver <laughs> was that clever. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, mean, you, yeah. "You rattle off those three. Yeah. And, yeah, and I and I said, uh, "You know, it's very tricky to write a book uh, about the company because I, I I don't want to put my friends in danger." I don't want to be uh, pointed out as the guy who, uh, you know, uh, one of those guys who yeah. wrote a book to uh, complain or revenge or criticize or whatever, which is absolutely not the case. Uh, and he said, no, but you should do a, you should do a, a novel. Yeah. Uh, you should write a novel just focusing on the your feelings you had. So uh, through the main character, which would be you, and uh, focusing on, on those feelings and then the story around can be coming from your, uh, you know, different missions and comes from uh, your experiences. I, I think that is the strength of the book, that you can identify with the main character, yeah. Alex, all the, all the way through the book, and you're on that journey with him, and that, that certainly came across in the in the book, so you've captured what uh, you intended to capture. Yeah, so it's it was uh, it was originally the idea of the book, and honestly, I, I just thought that uh, only... Uh, a few uh, amount of people and uh, would read it, and now it's a it's a bestseller in in Australia and New Zealand, and uh, and uh, and might become, as you said, uh, might become a, a TV series um, shortly in uh, in Hollywood. Yeah. So, um, and why actually? Why uh, why it did generate uh, this level of interest compared to other spy novels? Mm. It's because it sounds so real. Yeah. Because it is my real character it's it, it, the story itself is a fiction but the character is very real yeah um and it's something which has never been seen before uh, to address the family the kid and this dilemma and internal conflict when you are doing this job and you are a father and a, and a, and a husband in the same time yeah you you don't see um uh, 007 or or um James Bond yeah. um, going home to the family and having to take the kids to karate lessons. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, so. it, it's very easy. Uh, it's very easy to uh, arrive somewhere and say, uh, "My name is Bond," <laughs> and, and book your hotel room yeah. um, when you know that uh, you are the only one taking the risk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just about you. Yeah, you know. But the, the reality is, uh, it, it's not. Uh, it's your it's your direct it's your family potentially your friends and the other guys on the field yeah, yeah. so uh which is the other family the clan you yeah. you've said at the start of the podcast that it was cathartic in writing the book as well and by talking about your stories has that helped you with the the paranoia or what you're holding on to i think it will take a very very long time yeah uh, for this to uh, disappear uh, if it disappears one day yeah uh, clearly writing the book, so it took me three years. Um, clearly writing the book, yes, really helped. Mm. Um, I'm not as bad as three years ago, <laughs> uh, but um, it was a it was a very interesting uh, process to write this book. Yeah, um, because I had to one more time do some kind of self criticism and and, yeah. and 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 describe uh, your weaknesses, uh, my and, weaknesses. Yeah. In, in in the book so yeah. um, so it was it was very good uh, it was very good and and I think it's for the people reading it so you have the uh, 
the, 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 the fun of reading an espionage novel because yeah. it's still, you know, um, even on the spycraft itself, it's very realistic, of course. You have the real methodologies, mm. uh, and it's not with full of gadgets, and it's not James Bond, uh, etc. So it's it gives you a real insight of what we really do, mm. without breaking any secrets. Yeah. Uh, but it 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 so you have the joy of uh, and the fun of reading a spy novel, but in the same time, uh, that's what I'm really happy about it. It's about is that it shows uh, the, the readers by uh, uh, following what's in my head mm. or in our heads for the yeah. people doing this job and to have a better understanding of what this job is really about. Yeah. And and it's a real, I'm not saying it's a full sacrifice, sacrifice but in a way, yeah, you, you, uh, you give those ears away for your country and for yeah. the people of your, of your country. Uh, and uh, it's, yeah, you are you are well, sacrificing you, you, a part of your you life. Pay, you pay a price, and that comes across in the book. And, and <clears> sitting <throat> down talking talking to you, it, it shows that it does uh, pay a price. With your three careers, and uh, well, three careers at this stage, and I'm still not convinced you're not going to be an astronaut. But <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll bring you back on the podcast. What yeah. was it like on <laughs> Mars? <laughs> um, fighter pilot, and then uh, with the missions with the special uh, special forces, and then um, you. Uh, career as a spy they're all stressful can you distinguish between the type of stress like I, I look at the you know put me in the seat of a, a cockpit a, a fighter jet that would be stressful um, what sort of stresses were they different were they same yeah or? totally different yeah. Uh, the, 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 because the risk is totally different right. uh, the, the, the risk when you're a fighter pilot is a direct risk Yep. So you're doing a dogfight against uh, another jet. Um, yep. You know that he's going to shoot you. He's going to try to shoot you and you're going to try to shoot him. Or you're going to fly over some territories where guys downstairs are going to try to shoot you. Yep. So you know the risk. It's very clearly identified mm. and it's a very direct risk. Yep. Um, in the spy world, it's a very uh, insidious risk. Mm. You never know from where it's going to come. You never know from who it's going to come. You never know when it's going to come. That's why you have this level of paranoia. And yeah. that's why every second and every person is a, is a threat. Right. But uh, what I was telling you uh, early on is the big difference of sensation. I mean, when you are sitting on a fighter jet, uh, flying a, a single-seater uh, Mirage 2000, you really feel... Uh, being on the top of the food chain <laughs> and you really feel being basically the uh, the great white shark in the ocean mm -hmm. you know no one the can beat, yeah no one can beat you yep um and when you're a spy uh, because you are permanently kind of scared or worried about your environment any person approaching you talking to you every little car you know uh, mm. driving past you or bike or whatever you become um, you become the little uh, rat uh, which is uh, which is hunted yeah uh, so so you go from the the ultimate status of predator yeah to the ultimate uh, down status of target yeah you know you are a permanent target that's how you feel and that's why you you have this level of par permanent paranoia I, I understand that, and uh, like with as a fighter pilot, the risk is immediate. It's there. You've avoided the risk. You land. You're safe. You walk yeah. away. Wait to the, the next mission. Yeah. But as a spy, you would never stop. It, it carry carries with you. Yeah. And see, has it changed your um, perspective on human nature, like pure evil? Do, do you look at people and, you know, generally, I, I think, and I see there's a homicide detective, there's some very, very bad people out yeah. there. But the majority of people, I can still see some goodness in them. Yeah. What you've seen in Spy World, I, I hazard a guess, but just some of the, the stories that play out in the fictional book, it's a very violent, dark, uh, dark world or has the potential in certain circumstances. Has it changed your outlook on uh, humanity? Yeah, it's... it's uh... Uh, by definition, the the, the 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 spy world, you have to um, engage with uh, the bad, really bad people. Yep. But you have to develop some uh, friendship with the very bad people. Mm. 
And of course, the really bad people uh, don't have a lot of friends. Uh, and the only friends they have are the people they consider as bad at, as them. Yeah. So uh, doing this job, I really saw, uh, I think, the worst, the worst of the human nature. Yeah. Um, I, I saw some guys abandoning their wife and kids to death for money. Yeah. Just asking, asking for them to be exfiltrated and to be uh, saved for a certain amount of money. Yeah. And when we were asking, and how about your wife and kids, do we exfiltrate them as well? They said, no, no, just me. But don't forget yeah. my money. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, that's, yeah, that and, says and, a lot and, about uh, the character of a person. And, 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 uh, and when you have to deal with this kind of, of uh, person, and, uh, and as I was saying before with the scuba diving or snorkeling, you can't stop yourself after when you meet someone uh, anyone, you can't stop yourself from uh, trying to see uh, what is under. So yeah. yes, you uh, after a few years, and that's why you have to stop, yep. you start to lose faith in the human nature, yeah. including yourself. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, isn't it? Including yourself. And, and, uh, and it takes a while to recover from that, and it takes a while to be able to uh, really give your, your trust again to someone like i mean full trust yeah uh and and uh, it takes a while as well to um, really gain a friendship with someone uh without lying yeah without thinking you are manipulating him yeah it, it's it's interesting and i i know in the discussions that we've had you said that that darkness that overcomes you you, you know you're a good person, but you can get dragged into that, that world and that's yeah. something that you've got to fight against. What do you do to uh, to relax? What What's your go-to thing? <laughs> you, you mentioned having a beer, so you like yeah. like having having a beer. I understand that. Yeah, a few, uh, few Jack Daniels sometimes. Yeah. Okay, very <laughs> but, good. But um, no, look, I, uh, I try to do some uh, meditation. Yep. Uh, not enough, uh, I guess. Uh and actually, what I'm trying to do now is to uh, help people, uh, help the others. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, by uh, trying to uh, bringing them up and help them to evolve on yep. the good direction, on the good way. Yep. Uh, and uh, when I help someone, even a simple, very basic uh, thing like you know, helping someone to, to carry something or to cross the street. I mean, if, a, a yeah. random act of kindness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh, compared to what I did before. It's it's inside for, for me. It's multiplied by by 10. The yeah. feeling I have of it. Yeah. You know, I, I feel I really feel very good about what? it for a very simple act. Yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, it sounds silly, but uh, I have my dog. Uh, when I go to walk the dog yep. uh, to the dog park, yep. and you have all the, the owners of the dogs who used to uh, chat uh, all together and love to chat all together, yeah. I, 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 I can't chat to yeah. those people. I'm, I'm sitting on the, on the bench a few meters away. And if someone right. comes and starts to talk to me, yeah. uh, then it's the end of the dog walk. Right, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a work in progress. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. <laughs> work in progress. Yeah. I'm. Not, I can't let you go um, here without asking a couple of questions that people will go. You had a spy sitting opposite you. Why didn't you ask the question? So the gadgets. Uh, I, I, I look. I don't believe in James Bond. I know it's not real. <laughs> I know Jason Bourne's not real. Although if you were a spy and you um, had to get away, you could actually fly the plane, couldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> I can that, fly anything. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, it's not unbelievable that I can uh, fly anything. James, but, um, I can fly anything. I uh, I have my um, parachute uh, license as well. Uh, of course you yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> so I can I can do uh, a few things. But no, yeah, we have gadgets. Yeah, gadgets do exist, um, but they are more, uh, let's say, uh, technical uh, yeah. stuff. Uh, basically to hide information right um, so uh, you will have a, a phone um, a normal phone uh, but if um, 
uh, but you will be able to hide information or some notes you took or something or pictures you took yeah. in this phone. Uh, and even if you are arrested at the at the border of the country and they take your phone, even uh, yep. highly specialized technicians and really dig into the phone, they you've won't, got it covered. They won't be able to find it. Yeah. Uh, so we have our uh, homemade products. Yeah. Uh, so there is a technical department in the company. Yeah. Uh, like the Q, so, okay. like the Q branch. Okay. Okay. Uh, developing now we're some. Get, now we're getting there. This is uh, what. Yeah, <laughs> developing some some gadgets. So you walk down um, in the room and he's got all these. Yeah. Gadgets. Basically. Yeah. Uh, or it's more uh, what you ask for. So right. you go and see the guys and say, well, I would need this kind of this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I would need this kind of uh, glasses. I would need this kind of uh, glasses. I like yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I would need this kind of phone, or I would need yeah. this kind of um, of uh, you know uh, how do you say a scooter, like um, a little um, uh, a muppet, you know, yeah. in some some cities uh, with specific stuff on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, okay. So there is well, technology does come in come into play. And what about the training in in the um, the Frenchman? There was uh, your mate uh, Shrek, yeah. and uh, that uh, was uh, very handy with his uh, fists and uh, capable. You do the physical training there because you're obviously going into um, you know, dangerous uh, situations. Yeah. Yes, we do, but. Um, as you are undercover, I mean, as you are a clandestine uh, spy, uh, you're not meant to be a spy. Right. Okay. So you, you can't come uh, out as a... So uh, you are sometimes a, a consultant for a company. Yep. Uh, sometimes uh, you own your own uh, company. Mm. Uh, sometimes you are a photographer. Sometimes you are a, a press, you know, a journalist. They're, they're all your backstories. Yeah. And, yep. and so uh, you're not meant, uh, you're not meant to... Uh, to check if you followed, mm. you're not meant to be uh, very handy with your fist and 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 know how to fight. Uh, and you mustn't look like it. You can have, for example, uh, in some countries, uh, what some uh, other services are doing, just to check if you are a spy or not. Yeah, they would send some people, uh, like basically, to steal your wallet in uh, at night in a, in a street. Ah, right. And then they will check how you uh, how you react, how it. you react, and how you defend yourself. Yeah. And uh, and then they would think, ah, oh, okay, he's well trained. There's so many layers to it, isn't there? Yeah. It? And uh, and so, but yes, of course, we have some we have some training on different different kind of martial arts. Yeah. Uh, a, a mix, a bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, we know how to defend ourselves mm. uh, when it's really necessary. But yeah. it's not like um, pretty uh, high yeah. kicks or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's more, efficient. Um, yeah, it's Quick more taking the jaw yeah. off or the ears off or yeah. this yeah. kind of stuff so that uh, you can go really quick and uh, and then uh, have get, the time to run away. And get out of there. Yeah. What about appearances with your different uh, missions and change your appearances? You can, uh, you can. Uh, you, I had to uh, grow my hair or beard uh, yep. a few times. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have to uh, change your appearances. And then the appearance is also uh, how you dress. Yeah. Uh, someone who is used to see you uh, with a suit mm. in certain area of a particular city. Uh, you can go uh, two months after in the same city, but not in the same part of the city, yeah. but looking like a uh, you know a, a grunge uh, yeah, uh, yeah. guy, and and uh, you know that normally you will never bump into the same yeah same guy. A lot of it's about being a grey man, isn't it? Not yeah. standing out and just blending in. So you, if people see you, they're not going to yeah know, nothing's going to stick out. No, it. the only the only danger is to be recognised by someone you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it did happen to me once, and it's uh, in the middle of a mission, and it's uh, someone from another mission or someone a uh, former military guy, right? Uh, a friend came up, uh, came up to you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, oh, what are you doing here? Yeah, shut uh, up! And I, <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who. Yeah, I was yeah. in the middle of uh, a tale. I was yeah. following someone. Right. Yeah. Okay. I we could, there's so much we could talk about from the book and, and what you've done and. Uh, yeah, even the way you follow someone on a train, but we won't reveal that. But buy the book. I'll do the pitch for you. Buy, buy the book and uh, and find out. But uh, is there likely to be a second book? Yeah, with it. Working on it. At oh, the moment. great. Yeah, because it, it it does lend itself to um, yeah a continuation. So yeah, yeah. Um, your world has certainly changed from uh, 
starting out as a fighter pilot, did you ever envisage you'd be uh, in this situation, or is no, that just absolutely not the path that uh, your life has taken? Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, when I was a fighter pilot, I never uh, thought that I would become a, a pilot for Black Ops and and uh, and and doing the. the some missions in the Balkans uh, flying lower than the trees uh, and then I never thought that I would become a spy uh, and I never thought I would become a writer yeah. Yeah. or that you'd appear on as a guest on I Catch Killers podcast I, I never thought about this <laughs> really? Yeah. no 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 oh, really okay yeah. <laughs> Um, look, thank you very much for coming coming on. I, I think you. I really appreciate your openness and the way that you've discussed a trade that we really don't get a look in. Your humanity comes across, also your strength. You've got a don't mess with me look about you, which <laughs> I, I, I respect and I understand. Um, and I think you've given an insight into the morality of what you do and the fact that, uh, yeah, there are bad people out there and they need people to uh, people to uh, to stop them. And uh, full credit to you, the work that you've done. And uh, I'm just fascinated with the next thing that's going to happen. And I, I'm putting my money on you're going to become an astronaut. <laughs> First French Australian work walking on Mars, perhaps. Yeah, it would be great. I would like that. No, yeah. I have to uh, put my credit to, uh, I mean, the, the, the cops as well. And the uh, undercover cops, I know how hard it yeah. can be, what yeah. you've been going through. Yeah. And I also put my credit to my mates who are still on the field. Yeah, as all the armed forces who are at the moment we speak on the battlefield somewhere. Yeah, you 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 do feel that, don't you? When you when you leave and you feel like, oh, well, I'm not contributing, and you know they're out there still yeah. doing the yeah. doing the hard hard yeah. yards. But uh, I want to finish off just with with a quote because I think it, and I was, in preparing for this, it would just reminded me of what we've talked about and what you do. And it's a very simple quote, but I'll just read it out and we'll finish on that note. All that is required for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I think that might encapsulate a lot of the stuff that you've done in your uh, your life, Jack. Yeah. So, well, whatever your real name is, I'll find out. <laughs> um, thanks very much for coming on. Thank I you very skills. much, Gary. Cheers. Thank you very much. <laughs>